afternoon and happy Friday. It's the it's the end of May. It's the 31st of May today. It's June tomorrow. We're halfway through the year tomorrow. Well, I am enjoying a lovely fresh cup of tea and a chocolate bicky. This is a chocolate ripple biscuit by Arnott's. And they're delicious. Mmm. It's a bit too hot for sipping yet. It is definitely tea drinking weather. This week has been so cold, like freezing cold. Yesterday, I think it only got up to about 17 degrees. It was cold yesterday, so today's been a little bit warmer. It's nice in the sun, but still cold. So this morning, I was able to finish all of my pinball blocks. I finished filming the block tutorial for the last block, and here is the finished quilt top kind of so that's all nine blocks what I think I'm going to do what I've decided to do let me just pop you back where you were is I'm actually going to do a really skinny sashing in between the blocks just to sort of space them out a bit I just think they look a little bit too cramped and crowded so I had to go out and shop <laughs> um so it was a great excuse to go into work and buy some fabric which i i sort of treated myself i've sort of been a little bit been in a, in a little bit of a funk over the last week or so which is why i haven't really vlogged or done anything so yeah so i i, I thought i'm going to treat myself to some fabric to cheer me up and because fabric just makes me happy and Yay. So that's what I did, and I and I'm so happy that I did it. So with that, we're going to do a nice, lovely spotlight haul. I know how you all love a good old spotlight haul. I bought some really nice fabrics, and my bag is very, very colourful. So we've got these new bags at Spotlight, and it's this cool cheetah print. I'm sort of like collecting all of the the different designs that we have. That's a bit sad, but you know, never. Where am I going to start? Maybe. Um, so first of all, I bought some thread. I'm, I'm actually going to, I always use polyester thread uh, for all of my sewing, all of my quilting. And I was chatting to my friend Aisha in the UK and she was saying that she uses cotton threads and she gave me the reasons why and all of them were really, really good reasons, which I all, which I knew. But like just conveniently forgot. I am going to try my hardest to swap from using polyester thread to using 100% cotton thread. I don't know, it's, it was just like a, a habit that I got into and I didn't really think that it would really matter but I suppose it does. You really should be using cotton threads. But anyway, I'm just going to move you a little bit closer. You feel a little bit too far away. Hello, nice and close and intimate. Hi. It's actually fair to say that there's actually a really big sale going on at Spotlight at the moment. It's 30 to 50% off the whole store, pretty much of all of the products. So I think the threads were 30%, um, which is why I also stocked up on some more embroidery threads. Oh, I dropped one. Oh no, it's here. Yay. So I stocked up on some more black and white. I think it's the one of them I've run out of. So I'm just like, I'll just buy both. And then I got a lovely array of different colours just to stock up. It's not going to focus. So these are just the DMC stranded cotton threads or floss, depending on where you live in the world. And I just got a lovely rainbow of colours. And then I picked up this really cute little iron-on motif. And it's a spaceman. Look at him! I love this. This goes very, very well for my love of really cool, cute space stuff. I do have a plan for this. I want to buy like a a really cheap black hoodie. There's one I'm sort of eyeing off on ASOS and I'm just going to iron this on and then I've got a really cool hoodie to wear. And now moving on to fabrics. Let's just get them all out. A really lovely, colourful palette and then adding on these. Just so much colour. I love it. I love it. So I'm going to start with some remnants that I got. This one is a new Cloud9 one that we have and we've already come to the end of the bolt of it. It is by Leah Duncan. 
for Cloud9 and it's organic wild floral. The other fabrics in this range have like cats and it's kind of almost like a jungle type theme but it has this really nice sort of floral design. Love the colours. Really nice and warm and fun. Oh, the, the range is called Wild. There you go. I know what I'm talking about. Not really, no. So this piece is 90 centimetres and it cost me $7.20. Some of you have requested that I share prices with you because you're interested in, in how much things cost. So I will do that if I can. The next remnant I got is just a basic, like our basic quilters homespun range. It's called Prima Homespun. This is in the colour Oxford Blue. So it's a really dark navy. It kind of goes really well with this pair so nicely. This was 80 centimetres and based on the price per meter is how we price our remnants. This piece was $1.60. And then this was a clearance fabric. It is by Laura Blythman from one of her kid ranges, I think. I just fold this. Very particular with the way that I fold my quilting fabrics. Does anybody else like that? But this one has really cute, gorgeous elephants on it. Ah, sweet, sweet, sweet. I got a meter of this one and this particular one is clearance for I think it was $10 a meter so I paid $10 less 30% for my staff discount so something hang on let's have a look at the receipt bah, 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 bah. oh $3 off so it was six seven eight nine ten seven dollars or well, seven dollars for this piece this one oh, I saw this at work the other day and I was like, it is so cool. I love it so much. And there wasn't a lot on the roll, so I got what was left. I think it was like a meter and a half or something. And it's this really cute fabric with rainbows on it. I love it. This one is another one designed exclusively for Spotlight by, I think it's pronounced Ninola. I don't know. One of the facts about this range is that it's a digital print. So it is a little bit more like the print design is just like a little bit more crisp than a usual sort of print and it's also got like a different type of feel i don't know i definitely think may have to wash this before i use it i don't wash my fabrics before using them that is just what i do but it's so pretty i love it so much yay the other three fabrics i got are all for this quilt so I picked up some more of the white homespun. Again, this one is from the Quilters homespun that we have. It's called Prima. Um, it's just white. It's just a basic white. So I'm going to use this for the sashing and also for the borders. I also picked up more of the blue as well because I'm thinking of doing like a really skinny, really, really, really skinny border sort of between the two white bits oh no, it's a little bit hard to explain but I think that's what I'm going to do I'm not sure yet but I just got some more just in case I'm going to sort of go down that route and then because I'm sort of adding more sashing and borders to this quilt than I thought I was I actually picked up another fabric that I'm pretty sure I'm going to back it with it's another cloud nine fabric which was on clearance the only thing I'm not too happy about this one is that it's a poplin. It's a cotton poplin and I don't work with cotton poplins because I just don't really like the feel of it. But it is like the perfect fabric. It just matches so well. Look at that. It's got these beautiful pinks in it. This blue matches perfectly. It's got the white which matches perfectly. Like it's just such a great match for this quilt. A lot better than the one that I showed you before. This one. So this is the one that I was originally going to use and it's just a little bit dark. I still really do love this but I think this is just a better better type of blue and it just goes so well like the colors just match so well so I was able to get a little bit more of this one. I purchased three meters. I just think that should be enough. I don't know, I was umming and ahhing so hard, I'm like, oh, I don't know. Um, so I just got three meters. It was $12 a meter, usually like 25 or something. 
less than 30 percent so i think i paid like 25 dollars for three meters so we'll have to see i'm still oh i'm still umming and ahhing i might use the other one i might use this one at least now i have sort of two options if i use the other one i'm, I'm gonna have to like piece the back and i have an idea for that but if i don't end up doing that then i'll use this eh. I don't know. Big decisions need to be made. So that concludes my little spotlight haul. So I'm going to spend the rest of this afternoon and possibly the weekend trying to get this done because the link party opens on the 5th of June, which is like halfway through next week. I think that's Wednesday. Or is it Thursday? Or is it Tuesday? Oh, I don't know. Sometime or other. So I want to get it done. Um, I was able to buy some basting spray, which means I can now get started with some quilts or with basting. So I don't have that excuse. So yeah, I think it's a it's a weekend full of quilting and sewing and and getting some things done, which I'm happy about. So um, I'm gonna finish my cup of tea because if I don't, it'll just stay on the desk and um, go cold. And then I will get into start the blah. Oh my gosh. And then I will begin to start the sashing of the quilt top. Yay! Happy days! Happy days! Happy days! Happy days! Okay, so I think I've made a very big... No, it's not big. I've made a slight design change or choice. I'm going to add a little bit more to the blocks, which means... First of all, I've sort of spaced them out so I can see what it looks like if I did sashing and I quite like that. I think that sort of opens it up a little bit more. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add these blue triangles to all of the corners so that once they're all pieced there'll be like a second like design here. I know it's not very clear so then there'll be another blue triangle there so we'll have like a second type design. So yeah I think that's what I'm going to do. So that was a direction that I wasn't planning on taking, but I think we'll just add a little bit more to the quilt. It just looks a little bit, I don't know, odd, weird, unfinished. I think it needs that extra triangle on each of those opposite corners. So yeah, we're going to do that. have been pieced on. I'm going to try and turn this iron off for a moment. Hang on a minute. I should have done that before I pressed record. I think I like it. I think it looks okay. Let's step back a little bit. That's now what we have. And now it looks like tiles. And I really like that. I think I'm happy with this change. <laughs> I think I am. Now I just need to decide what size sashing I want to do. I don't know whether to keep it at this sort of skinniness oh my dad's sneezing <laughs> or I make it a little bit thicker I'm not sure I'm just going to play around with it a little bit more so while I decide what to do ah oh, decisions these last minute decisions are hard oh, I don't like it I think it looks good let's have a look mm. yeah yeah it it just looks like a tiled wall which I think looks really cool. Okay, I think I'm not quite convinced yet. Oh. Anyway, it is what it is. I can't change it now. Let's just go with it. Cool. Okay, so I've started doing the sashing and I think I'm going to make another design change or add another thing to it because I just felt a little bit like, I don't know, I just wasn't happy with it so this is what I'm thinking there what do we think of the striped what do we think of this stripe addition 
hmm I'm not oh, I don't know um so okay so what I've done is I've sashed the blocks together so I've done the sashing here but I haven't done the long sashing joining all the rows together it just looked a bit I don't know boring so that's what it looks like without the stripes in these little bits here I don't know it just looks a bit and it needs just something extra and so when I add them back I don't know I think it just sort of lifts it I I'm not sure so my decision that I need to make is whether I leave it with just the four stripe squares just in that center bit or I add more striped squares to like the edges here so here here you know just to sort of expand it a little bit and then do a white border and then the striped fabric for the binding I don't know I think I think I'm gonna leave it for today and come back to it in the morning and see what I think it's a tough choice I've just sort of like I've gone in like a whole other direction that I didn't think I would be going to today. I just thought I was just going to simply just just sash it together and and be happy with it. But no, lots of changes have been happening. Just standing and looking at it now, I quite like with just the four in the center. And then the binding will sort of, I suppose, like tie it all in. But... I don't know whether it's just going to look odd just having four random stripe squares in the middle of the quilt. I don't know. Or maybe I should put like some squares, stripe squares just in the corners. That might be an option. Hmm. I'm going to have to think about it. Just play around. I'll, I'll think about it and I think I'll f continue with it tomorrow morning and see what I think. Oh, decisions. Why did I decide to change it all? I don't know why. <laughs> why did I decide to do that? Oh my goodness. Anyway, it is what it is and what it will be is what it will be. That's all I can say. Good afternoon and happy Saturday. It's the 1st of June, which is crazy. Happy 1st of June. Technically, here in Australia, it's kind of like the first day of winter. So, yeah, it's winter. Winter is here. I've put all the calendars forward and we're ready to start the month off in a good place. In my little sewing bubble and getting this quilt up finished. I think, reflecting back on what I was thinking about yesterday, I'm going to keep the little stripe squares where they are. I'll just do a simple border around the edge and then I will bind it with the stripey fabric just to sort of tie it all in. I think that's what's going to happen because I walked in this morning and I was like, I was still like, yes, yes, I like it. So hopefully it's not going to look out of place, but... Yeah, I'm not going to, I'm not going to faff and think, like overthink it. So we're just going to do it. So I'm going to cut down the sashing bits here. I just, I did actually did a big long strip, but now I'm just going to cut it up and uh, piece it together and finish the quilt top. Mm. Happy days. Day. Yeah, it's Wednesday. It's been a couple of days since I last vlogged and uh, since then I have finished my quilt top for my Pantone quilt. la -da! I can't quite remember the well, last time I left you with this quilt so I'm just going to quickly just run over what I've done and what we're going to be doing today. So all of the sashing is on and I've also done border as well. This little strip of stripey fabric here is for the binding. Just so I can sort of see what it's going to look like with just a really small strippy binding thing. So that is the quilt top 
finished and it's been up there for the last couple of days and so today we're finally quilting it i was able to piece together the backing the other day uh, and i'm so glad because i definitely had enough i'm going to use the cloud nine poplin that i showed you the other day that i bought because i just think it goes a lot better with this this like with the quilt so uh yes i'm very happy with that match yeah it goes well i think where is some blue as we go let's so there it goes it goes well i don't know whether it really picks up on the camera but it does look good in real life i set up my sewing machine yesterday i actually did a little bit of a test of the type of quilting that i want to do i'm sort of venturing out of my straight line quilting i want to do something different i just i'm so sick of just being you know the same all the time so i had a look on pinterest for some ideas of how to do uh wavy quilting a lot of them recommended using a walking foot for wavy quilt uh quilting um i thought i was gonna have to use uh like my stippling or quilting foot but no a lot of people said you can do it with your walking foot and i feel the most comfortable using a walking foot so i had a bit of a play and i actually really quite like it i just put together a really rough sort of like test bit with some old fabric and a bit of off cut of batting and i'm actually really happy with how it turned out i'll show you so this is my little test strip this is actually the back of it but you can actually see the effect a lot better but that was my test of doing some wavy quilting just with the walking foot that was the other side you can't quite see it on this side but it kind of has that really nice sort of organic texture i think the reason why i wanted to do wavy quilting was one to do something a little bit different to venture out of the box of just straight line quilting and and, and yeah i just wanted to do something different and secondly i kind of wanted to do something that was kind of fitting of the the theme the theme is living coral so when i think of coral i think of the sea so because I've kind of got like a backing that kind of has like a seaweed type texture to it and I've got the pinwheels that sort of have a little bit of movement through the quilt, I thought let's do some movement in doing some weavy lines. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to attempt it. I felt really comfortable just doing really organic wavy lines uh, with the machine. I mean, this isn't a full size quilt. This is just a little tiny little piece. So how easy that's going to be going from a small little test piece to a quilt i don't know but we're going to give it a go and i'm just going to go over the flow i mean no puns intended with that but yeah we're just gonna go with it and not stress so goals for today let's say them out loud we are going to baste this quilt i was able to get basting spray the other day hallelujah so we can do that so baste the quilt I want to try and finish quilting it today because I don't think it's going to take that very long because I'm only doing the wavy lines just one way. It's just going to go all the way down the length of the quilt. And then, depending on how I feel after all of that, we'll try and at least sew the binding on so it's ready to hand stitch over the next couple of days because I'm pretty sure that the link party for this challenge opens today, the 5th it's open until the 14th so i have until the end of next week to get this done which will definitely happen so yeah let's get cracking woohoo days my quilt is all basted and we're ready to get quilting i've just done a really quick practice again of my wavy lines just so i've sort of got the feeling of it down packed i've changed the needle in the machine i've just bumped the stitch length up to three i usually do a two and a half just for normal sewing but for quilting i'm going to take it up to three i've got my quilt gloves ready i've got some good music queued up and we're now ready just to sit down and do it. I am thinking I'm possibly going to get this done quite quickly. I think. I hope. Now that I've said it out loud, it possibly wouldn't happen. But yeah, I'm pretty optimistic that I will get this uh, quilted today. Yay. Uh, so that was a happy thought. Um, now we're just going to do it.
So I've been sewing literally for maybe about two and a half hours and I am I'm pretty sure I'm on my last stitch and then the quilting is finished so as I've done with all of my other um, finishing quilt vlogs I'm going to film me doing the last line because it's always a joy of celebration to share together so let's do it I'm listening to the greatest showman soundtrack and I totally forgot just how much I love that movie and the songs on it so I'm made a happy mood because of that now but anyway let's get this done just I just got a little bit here in this corner um, I might just fill that in and then and then we are definitely done happy days happy days yeah I think that will do because the binding will sort of fill the rest in so, yay! Happy days! Happy days! I think I'm happy with it. Um, I haven't really like flung it out and stepped back. I've just, I've just gone for it. I've just quilted and quilted and quilted and quilted and quilted and quilted without stopping because I just want it done. So, let's have a look. Oh, yes! And this is what we've ended up with it's a little bit hard to see oh that's a bit better but it's lots of random lines very very organic I just sort of just went crazy with it I, I think I like it it's hard to see because it's just so bright because of the light but it's got a really nice texture and it was kind of what I was I was hoping for so that's a win so now that I've got that done, I may as well just keep going on with the binding, I think. I might just sew it on and then I'll leave it for tomorrow to hand sew it to the back. I'm working in the morning, so I might have that as like a thing to come home to in the afternoon and 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 sit in front of the TV while I recover from my morning at work. So sounds like a great idea to me. So as I've mentioned about 10,000 times, I'm going to do the striped binding. And that's to match the little like center medallions that I put in the quilt. So I'm gonna get chopping, get sewing, and then that's me done for the day. Yay. Thursday. It's Thursday, isn't it? Wow, this week is going so quick. It is the 6th and it's later on in the afternoon. It's just about to go 4.30. It's been, it's been a day. It's been a day. I've been at work this morning, finished at about 2 and so I came home and had lunch and just sort of catching up on the, just catching up on stuff that I miss out when I'm off at work. I'm on to my second cup of tea um, and it's pretty much all gone. Oh, it's been one of those days, you know, when you just, you come home and you just gotta have two cups of tea just to just sort of get back on track. But anyway, I am going to sit down and do the binding on my Pantone quilt. I am so in love with this quilt. I'm so happy with the wavy lines that I did on it. It's just so nice. And the backing, I, I had reservations about using a poplin as a backing. I personally, I don't, I don't like poplin fabrics. I just don't like the feel of it. Even though this one is 100% cotton, 
I'm still not a big fan on like the way that it feels even like how it sounds can you hear that can you hear that it just sounds weird but it 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 was fine it it went through the machine really nice it was really easy to baste really it hasn't puckered or anything like that so yeah I'm I'm pleased with it I'm it just matches so well with this quilt but yeah I'm yeah I don't know um, but I'm just glad it worked. It's kind of opened my eyes to the possibilities of using poplin again as a backing or anything in a quilt. But I'm still, I'm still a 100% cotton quilting fabric girl. Like, I don't know. I'm sort of a bit of a purist when it comes to that. But I think the lesson learned is if I find a fabric that works with a quilt and it's 100% cotton poplin, no polyester, then it will be okay. So, yes. It's been a, this has been a quilt of, of learning lots, of doing new things, of using poplin and doing a different type of quilting, which I'm definitely going to do again, because it just, it just, I don't know, it's just so easy to do and just a new fun little texture to have. So, happy does. I'm going to get cosy, where I usually get cosy, out in the front room, in front of the TV, because, you know that's the best place to bind I say I'm going to give you a little bit more of a closer up because you can't really quite see what I'm talking about so this is my up close view of the quilt at the moment I really love the wavy lines in the backing in my crinkly weird sounding backing <laughs> but then that is the surface of the quilt and I think it looks really lovely I'm so happy with it I hope me trying new things encourages you to try new things although we like to sort of stay in our own little like boxes of doing things that we feel most comfortable doing and there's nothing wrong with that i think it's also really important to to just venture out of the box every now and then and what i'm talking about is in is in quilting i'm not talking about life in general I'm not ready for that conversation yet but just in our quilting practices sometimes it's nice just to to venture out and try something new and and to experiment and and do something that we're not quite comfortable or familiar with and just giving it a go and seeing what happens and I'm really glad that I just sort of just let go and gave a different style of quilting a go and I have to say I absolutely love quilting on this machine so as you all know the machine that I have is a brother PQ 1500 SL it's taken me a while to get used to quilting with this and and knowing how it sort of functions when it's when I'm quilting with it but now that I've sort of now that I know what to do when I'm quilting with it I love love quilting with this machine it just it's just amazing it just goes and goes and goes and goes and goes and goes. Now, I have said that I will be doing a, well, it's a little bit more than a 12 month review now, but I will be doing another updated review on this sewing machine. And I will tell you how I set up my sewing machine when I'm quilting. I will be sort of updating my pros and my cons because although there are some like really great things about the sewing machine, there's one or two things that just really knock me when I'm when I'm quilting so I'll let you know um, what they are but other than that I love quilting with this machine and just having a machine that does that has made quilting this quilt and trying something different so much more enjoyable I'm hoping now that I've sort of ventured out of just my straight line quilting I have a little bit more confidence to do free motion quilting Ugh, don't get ahead of me though <laughs> I'm I I, I don't know, I really should take my own advice and <laughs> the advice that I just gave you just like two seconds ago of venturing outside the box and trying something new. I should, I should, I should really like give myself that advice when thinking about free motion quilting, but, um, yes, I do have a quilt in mind that I, I think I want to give free motion quilting a go, but. I still need, I still, I still, I need to like pet myself up and yeah, I don't know yet. Anyway, I'm going to stop baffing and blabbering to you and I'm going to get into some sewing and 
get this quilt done. So, yay. I'm not sure with this challenge quilt whether I have to do a label before I sort of upload my finished quilt. I'm going to have to check that. But if I don't have to label it, happy days. I can just enter it into the link party tomorrow. If not, then I'll have to do a label tomorrow before uploading it. So we'll see. Hello again. I finally made it to the couch. I've had dinner and I'm finally ready to start binding my quilt. I've covered myself in this quilt first. This is my current go-to lounge quilt that I sort of snuggle up under when I'm watching TV. It is my friendship star quilt that I finished last year, I think. I don't know. I can't remember. I've just recently washed this because it was covered in chocolate stains. Don't tell anyone. So it's all like nice and wrinkly and, and I washed it in this vanilla smelling fabric softener so it just smells so nice and homey and I love it so I have this quilt on and then I'm covering myself up with I've got this one so I've got my quilt I've got all of the things that I need do I have scissors yes I'm looking at them I've got my needle and thread and I also have another cup of tea it's a big mug kind of tea day, so that's why I'm using this one. So I've got my Yorkshire Biscuit Brew in here and loving it. I'm so happy. Let's get this done. Good morning and happy Tuesday. It is the 11th of June and today I'm going to be doing photography for my Pantone quilt. I've just come out in to the backyard and I think I'm going to pop it Oh, bright on the fence here I'm not sure whether it's a bit too bright for it though but I'm gonna put it up and see what it looks like anyway if it's too bright then I'll come back out and do it later this afternoon when the Sun's not so intense but let's give it a go see what it looks like Where is it? I really like this setup here, but it's just a bit too bright at the moment and it's got all the shadows over it. So I think I might just leave it for the moment and I'll come back in and, and reshoot this afternoon. I think that's a good idea. I still have to label it, so that might be the plan. I'll label it and then come out and, and photograph it. Good idea. Let's do that. I'll tell you what, it is so nice out in the sun though. It's lovely and warm. So let's go inside, do the label, and then this afternoon we'll come back out and hopefully reshoot. Fingers crossed. You're a bit dusty and dirty. Well, that's a little bit better. So I'm back in the sewing room, somewhere where it's not as bright. I can actually see what I'm doing now. So I'm going to get started on the label. I'm going to do my signature hexi flower because I, that's just what I love doing. And uh, it's quick and simple and I'm able to just showcase some of the fabrics that I've used on the front of the quilt, onto the back of the quilt, in the label. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have some of the print as like the middle part of the flower and then the petals are going to be this, the light pink and the coral. I've got my hexi templates, these are one and a half inch I believe. Which size do I use? Yeah, they're one and a half inch pre-cut paper pieces by So Easy. I love these. It's going to sit and sew that all together. Lately, my hexi making has changed. I know a lot of people, including myself, have begun basting their hexes using um, basting glue or like it's like a fabric glue or glue stick thing. I have started doing that, but today I'm just going to stick to the old school thread basting and I'm going to baste them that way and then hand stitch them using just some old cotton thread. I know that glue basting is so much quicker but I really enjoy basting my hexes just with a needle and thread. Yeah, call me old school, call me traditional, just call me lazy <laughs> because I can't be bothered finding a glue and sitting there and sticking it and getting sticky fingers and nah. I'm not into that today. So I just want to sit and sew today. Yeah, it's just one of those days. I'm not feeling 100%. So I just want to 
just sit and just sew and just yeah get a nice little buzz from it that I usually do so let's sew back outside in the sun it's actually really quite nice out here the sun is actually really quite warm today and oh, there you go you can kind of see me now yeah the afternoon sun is lovely i've just brought my quilt back out uh because the sun's not shining on the fence so much and it looks really good i was able to get some really nice photos i'm really happy with what i took so i'll upload them to the link party a little bit later on today I still haven't done the label. I've sewn the hexi flower together, but I just haven't put it on the quilt yet. So I'll do that a little bit later on. Uh, but yeah, I just think I'm just going to just enjoy the sun a little bit more. This is my view. You want to have a look? Just zoomed it in a little bit, but that is my view. It's really pretty. The wisteria is like slowly molting because it's autumn slash winter. So yeah but it looks good you can totally tell that on this bottom block here i used a different type of white homespun so that block just sort of stands out and there's a couple of triangles in the second one that i used the same white as i did in that block so they look a little bit odd but i don't care it is what it is so here is my what is the little hexi flower i'm really happy with the way it turned out and it looks really good on the back of the quilt so I am about to just take out all of the basing stitches and I'm going to just cut out a piece of heat and bond lots of bits of paper that I'm going to put on the back to then put that onto the back of the quilt and then I'll do all my writing info on it. I'll choose one of the lighter petals I think and then we'll line it on and stitch around it and that's done. So happy days. If you yourself would like to know how to make a hexi flower quilt label then of course I've done a tutorial and I'll link it here on the screen and also down below if you would like to know how to make one or how I choose to make them. As I mentioned I love making hexi flower labels for my quilts it's sort of like become my signature and I, I just find them really simple really easy and you can use over leftover fabrics I think it's just such a creative way to put on all of the vital details of your quilt once you've finished it. It's so pretty, I love it. This is my label or ironed on and this is what I popped on. I've just done Pantone Quilt Challenge June 2019 made by me and then I also did the hashtag Living Coral so I can remember what the challenge was all about. I used this pen here. This is a Pantel marker for textile. Oh, it's not going to focus. Oh, there we go. It's fine point and it's made in Japan. So anything that's usually made in Japan, I find really good quality. This I picked up at an art store here called Ecclesley's and that's kind of like the point that it has on it. It doesn't bleed or anything like that. It just looks, yeah, perfect. So I think I'm just going to stick with a white thread to do the stitching around the edge. I'll just do a really simple buttonhole stitch it can also be known as a blanket stitch and we'll just do it around the whole edge and then it's done good afternoon and happy thursday it's the something of june i don't know what is it it's the 13th i just had a quick look and i thought i'd just finish up the vlog by showing you my finished label and the finished quilt because it's done and i'm really really happy with it i couldn't i couldn't ask for a better looking quilt i'm just really really happy with 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 where it went and how it got finished so and there is my finished label a really sweet little buttonhole stitch around the edge and yeah it's done the quilt is happily finished so i'm really really happy with it and yeah it was a challenge that i actually didn't 
really know that I was going to enter and I'm glad that I did because I'm really happy with the result and I've learnt a lot with this quilt and I've pushed things and like I've, I've pushed boundaries and tried new things and I'm just really really happy with the result. I didn't get a chance to upload anything to the link party yesterday or the day before. Yesterday I worked so that was kind of out. So I'm going to finalise it all and add it to the link party today and enter it into the competition. I've already had a look at some of the quilts that people have entered and they are wonderful. They're so much better than mine but um, you know it's all about participating and having fun and learning things along the way and just being involved I think is the, 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 the best thing I suppose. I've actually finished the majority of the edit of this vlog this morning and it's a long one so enjoy and I and I hope you did enjoy watching the process of this quilt coming together and coming to its finalization that it is now so yeah happy days over this weekend I will be editing the block tutorial for the Pimmel block this one here so you can look forward to seeing that very soon hopefully fingers crossed so until then thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you again very soon bye